The hardness of steel and the Rockwell number HRC is an often discussed topic among knife freaks. But did you know that the hardness of a 60 Rockwell steel is much more than twice the hardness of a 30 Rockwell steel? Or did you know that 10 Rockwell hardness difference, let's say from 40 to 50 Rockwell, is much less than 10 Rockwell difference from 50 to 60 Rockwell? The effective material strength behind the Rockwell numbers don't rise linear, they rise in a curve, in a potential. In this video I would like to help you to better understand the Rockwell scale. So this knowledge don't change your life, but this knowledge helps you to better understand the physical properties of your knife. Stay tuned if this sounds interesting for you. Hello YouTube, welcome to a knife knowledge video. The most knife freaks I know are often talking about Rockwell and Rockwell numbers, but almost no one of them is aware that an intuitive comparison between two Rockwell numbers is not possible. In this video I will try to explain you why the effective material strength of a steel is not linear to the Rockwell HRC scale. In order to explain you the advantages and the disadvantages of the HRC Rockwell hardness scale, we will compare the Rockwell measuring system with the Wickers hardness measuring system. And in my case this was the key to understand the problems of the Rockwell hardening system. And at the end of the video I will give you a link to a Rockwell hardness difference calculator. But before we start with Wickers and Rockwell, let me tell you in a few seconds how I came to this topic. In my entire life I sharpened for sure two or three thousand Swiss Army Knight blades with the 14110 steel hardened on 56 Rockwell. And I made this with many many different sharpening tools from a, a natural sandstone up to different diamond sharpening tools. That's why the hardness of 56 Rockwell became something like a reference point for knives for me. As I resharpened the first time my 59 Rockwell Venture knife on these corundum sticks, like this. I felt immediately that this needs a lot more time to get to the same result as when I resharpen a Swiss Army knife on these corundum sticks. In the past I thought that the hardness difference between a 59 Rockwell knife and a 56 Rockwell blade is 3% because the difference is 3 and uh, the Rockwell scale has 100 steps. But as I sharpened the first time I venture on these corundum sticks I realized that must be more difference than just 3%. And yes of course you're right if you say hey to make a comparison or to make a relation between the sharpenability and the hardness of a steel, this is super dangerous. But in this case, the 14C2810N and the 14110 steel from Victorinox are that similar in composition that I think a relation between sharpenability and hardness is possible in this case. Doesn't matter if I'm right or not. This was the reason why I started to make researches on this topic. And as deep I went, the more interesting it became. And now I would like to explain you the Rockwell scale HRC or the measuring system behind in the simplified version. To determine the Rockwell number HRC of a workpiece, a cone with a diamond tip of 120 degrees is pressed into the material with a force of 150 kilograms. This is how a tip of a Rockwell HRC measuring device looks like in reality. 
the deeper the cone sinks into the material, the softer the material is. If the cone doesn't sink at all, the material has the hardness of 100 rock wares. This is the hardness of diamond. If the cone sinks 0.1 mm deep, the material has the hardness of 50 rock well. Just for a rough orientation, a Swiss army knife has 56 rock well. If the cone sinks 0.2 mm deep, the material has a hardness of 0 rock well. Unalloyed and unhardened normal structural steel is about 0 rock well. Every 2000 of a millimeter that the cone sinks deeper into the material means that the workpiece is one rock well softer. The calculation formula for the Rockwell number in the HRC scale is 100 minus penetration depth divided by 0 0.002. In the case on the picture that means the penetration depth, this is 0 0.2, divided by 0 0.002 is 100. And 100 minus 100 is 0. Doesn't matter if you understand this formula or not. You can see that the only variable factor in this formula is the penetration depth. That's why the penetration depth is the only factor who determines the HRC number. In the next animation I will explain you the problem why the Rockwell HRC scale is not linear to the effective material strength. The deeper the cone penetrates, the more material he has to push aside. This makes it harder to sink further. A cone with a 120 degree tip has to push away four times as much material if he penetrate 0.2 mm instead of 0.1 mm. This important factor is not taken into account in the Rockwell measurement system. And that's why we have this gap between the effective material strength and the HRC number. And as hard as the material is, as bigger this gap. And yes, of course, this question is allowed. Why does the HRC scale exist if the HRC value doesn't correspond with the effective material strength? The answer is that the industry needs a fast, cheap and fully automated measuring method. The Rockwell method works without manual measuring steps and that's why this method doesn't uh, handicap the production flow. But now I would like to compare the Rockwell measuring system with another measuring system. And this is the weakest measuring method. To determine the weakest core, a pyramid with a diamond tip with 136 degrees is pressed into the workpiece. The impression mark on the workpiece is more or less a square. The next step is to measure the two diagonals on the square. This measuring step you have to do manually under a microscope. Based on the diagonals, you can use now a formula to calculate the surface area of the impression. This is the formula to calculate the weakest hardness score. As you can see, the pressing force is calculated per area and this creates the hardness value. So on weakest the force per area is taken into account. During on Rockwell only the penetration depth is calculated. Right now we learned that the changing size of the penetration area of the indenter is taken into account on the Wickers calculation. This is the reason why the Wickers values correspond much better to the effective material strength of the steels. The disadvantage of the Wickers system is that it takes much more time to determine the size of the impression because the diagonals has to be measured manually under a microscope. An intuitive hardness comparison from steel with different weakest numbers is possible. To compare steels with different Rockwell numbers is not possible or at least super unprecise. So as far as good, but the only problem we have now is 
that our knives are tested with Rockwell and not with Vickers. So what can we do if we want to compare the hardness of two different steels with a Rockwell number? Option number one is to looking for a hardness comparison table. Here on this comparison table you can compare Rockwell, Vickers and Brinell numbers and the tensor strength with each other. If I for example want to compare 56 Rockwell with 59 Rockwell, I compare 610 Vickers with 670 Vickers. And this has a difference around 10%. So now I know 56 Rockwell is 10% less hard than 59 Rockwell. The link for this comparison table you find in the description box below. A second option to compare the effective material strength of steels with a Rockwell number is to use the Rockwell Hardness Difference Comparator from Mike Brubacher. Mike Brubacher is the inventor from the Edge and Up Sharpness Measuring System. The link for this comparator you find here and in the description box below. Here on this Rockwell Hardness Difference Comparator you can compare two Rockwell numbers. I would say Let's take again 56 Rockwell and 59 Rockwell. After you have to press on calculate and this comparator says us that the difference is 14%. And to be honest my friends, I have no idea why on the comparison table we have a difference from 10% and here on this calculator we have a difference from 14%. So maybe you know more, please let me know in the comment section below. My aim of this video was to show you that the hardness measuring with the HRC scale has a problematic aspect. The problem is that the effective material strength is not linear to the HRC scale. And I wanted to show you two methods how you can calculate the real hardness difference. Even if the results was not as good as I expected, I hope you could learn something. So my friends, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you next Friday. Ciao.